We will continue to use oil for, uh, for energy for many years to come. What we hope is that the solar energy, the solar cell technology, will begin to play in a more and more important role. As it, as it does, uh, as it begins to uh, provide more and more energy, then we can conserve the oil for use in chemistry, for use in making important new chemicals. Chemicals for plastics, chemicals for, uh, for pharmaceuticals. Uh, these uh, products that come from oil are extremely valuable to, uh, to our society. Uh, so there's uh, a very good reason, many good reasons, not to burn the oil but to use it for productive uh, products. It's difficult to predict. Uh, we're catching up. In just a few years, we have, uh, we have increased the efficiency from uh, nearly zero to uh, values which are approaching uh, commercial silicon cells. So I think within the next few years, we will, we will see competitive uh, performance. Well, this was a wonderful discovery because it was really unex not expected. Uh, we thought that uh, the sci scientific community thought that uh, they had understood all the forms of carbon. And then all of a sudden there was a, a new form of carbon in this, uh, with a structure that is so beautiful, like that of a soccer ball. Uh, so it was important because it opened the imagination of the chemist. That was also important because these new fullerenes uh, had special new properties. Uh, we, my colleagues and I, used those properties in the solar cells, and this may be one of the most important applications for the fullerenes. I think the answer is clearly yes. Uh, the initial discovery, as you said, was about 50 years ago. And it's, it takes time for uh, science to be deeply understood, uh, for a commercial technology, for, for a technology to become a commercial product and slowly grows and then takes off. And I think we're sort of just at this point where we see uh, solar cell technology becoming really important. One of the, uh, one of the uh, barriers, uh, however, is the high cost. So that if we, can, uh, if we can reduce the cost by using uh, the polymer solar cells, then we can hope to see very wide, uh, widespread usage of, of solar cell technology. It's a source of great pride. Uh, it's a recognition of recent work. Uh, I received the Nobel Prize for work that was done 30 years ago. Uh, so it's a wonderful honor to be recognized again for something new that I have done in recent years. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, it also, of course, emphasizes the importance and the potential impact uh, of these polymer solar cells. And what I, what, I, what I hope to see is scientific colleagues all over the world working to help us solve these problems. So I think this uh, uh, INEA Talgas Prize will focus attention uh, on the opportunity for these polymer solar cells. for these polymer solar cells. Yeah, uh, last question uh, about this day. Uh, what do you feel with uh, a so great participation, especially by young people and by young scholars? 
I find that almost everywhere I go, that young people are interested and excited by these kinds of new ideas. Too often, young people in, uh, in, in, in the countryside or in, in a developing country or uh, uh, in, in a small village have no aspiration that they can achieve uh, a university education, that they can actually make a contribution. So if I can perhaps uh, give them some hope that that's in their possibility, then uh, I consider it a very good day. <laughs>